As the mother of two healthy children, supermodel Leah Kabedi now directs her attention to others less fortunate, particularly in her home country of Ethiopia. In March 2005, Kabedi was invited by the World Health Organization to act as goodwill ambassador for maternal, newborn and child health. I feel privileged to be a spokesperson for so many young women and their babies. Safe motherhood remains a distant hope throughout our continent. Each year, six million children die before they, re they reach the age of five in Africa, and most of this is preventable. We, we found that here is a woman who appreciates that she has a responsibility to address the huge margin of exclusion that a lot of women and children are exposed to around the world. Her role as WHO spokesperson took Kabedi back to Ethiopia in 2006 on a visit to the northeastern region of Amhara. The WHO is working across the country to support nutrition and sanitation programs in local communities. Kabedi begins her trip by accompanying health extension workers as they review progress in a nearby village. The village is situated in a high-risk region for malaria. She says she's feeling better now, but... And that was her grandchild. She has like five children. She thought me having two was too little. I thought her having five was a lot. And she is hands-on. And this results-oriented approach, I think, is what makes her so special. She goes there and she speaks to the women. WHO health workers are educating villagers on how to take precautions against malaria. But treating, so treating it does what exactly? It just kills the mosquitoes? No, you Because you, they can't go in here anyway, right, the mosquitoes? Yeah, but the thing is that you have a double effect of both the barrier and also when the mosquitoes sit there, they die. They so do you, die? Yeah, so you reduce just the number the in, number of, in okay. the environment. Does she see any difference now? Do you see any difference now? Saying it has, yeah, it has decreased. This was one of the bad areas for malaria yeah. lately, and she, she really like see the difference. Health workers are also educating local people on improving sanitation and hygiene. Would I like to go in <laughs> and, and come out? I, think I that actually would be do nice need thing. to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This one woman had a latin for the first time in her life. Um, and she's, you know, completely ecstatic about it. And we're talking, and I said, "Well, how did you do before you had a latrine? How did it work?" And then she said, "You know, well, we women have to wait until dark, of course." I was shocked. Outside, they've done a really nice little um, pottery thing that you just wash your hands in and stuff. And so they're teaching them how to wash your hands after each, you know, um, bathroom run. In a region crippled with poverty. Sanitation at home is just one of the problems being tackled by the WHO. Kabedi is later shown round a hospital where families are receiving assistance to combat severe malnutrition. This is the main ward where we treat patients with malnutrition. He comes from malaria area. Yeah, it's a chronic, one of the chronic complications of malaria is the malnutrition by itself and severe anemia. Uh, usually, you know, they have uh, these severe infections and uh, underlying malnutrition. As you can see, this child has also widening of the wrist, which is a sign of vitamin D deficiency in the kids. But what can the mothers do if they don't have the means not to breastfeed? You know, what do they do? Yes, most of them stay about like two weeks, three weeks in the hospitals uh, and then they go back and uh, you always wonder what happens after they go back because all of a sudden treatments are not available anymore. It's, it's pretty, pretty rough. The hospital is using a therapeutic milk for severely malnourished infants in the initial phase of treatment. In the hospital kitchen, Kabedi helps prepare the milk with nurses who are in charge of the infant feeding unit. Outside the hospital, 
Kebedi spends time with a mother whose child is severely dehydrated. Well, the child that I was feeding, he is actually two. He's never walked. Um, she says he stands up if she holds him and he sits down. Uh, his legs are so thin, so thin. Uh, and he doesn't, she says he doesn't respond at all, like, to her either. And he doesn't really speak. But I think he's just ill, you know? I think for any mother, um, the worst thing is to see your child sick, obviously. I don't know if they know that they can prevent it, but we know, and it's the same thing, you know? She has got a calmness, which immediately communicates itself to the mother and the child that she's comforting and that she's seeking to help and to communicate with. And this calmness, uh, uh, it, it, I think, I feel, you, you almost feel that it is centered not only in her confidence, but in her trust in humanity. She makes you believe that you have the potential to solve this problem. One of the main purposes of Kibedi's visit is to promote the work being done by the WHO to combat the prevalence of obstetric fistula, an injury suffered by many Ethiopian women forced into childbirth at a very young age. This is our theatre. You can see they're moving a light about oh, up yeah, there. They're, oh, they're working on something We've, like? we've got four tables in there. We've got four doctors working in the theatre. While at the hospital, Kibedian doctors tell the press about the work that they are doing with the WHO. I know how hard it must be for a mother who went through pregnancy to uh, have to experience losing a child. And not only that, after that she has to endure an injury such as a fistula, which is a really horrible experience. Um, I don't even know what that must be like. There's really a lot of work to be done. We really have to focus on preventing this from happening. This young lady has a vision. She wants every young Ethiopian girl to have an opportunity for her young body to grow first, to develop fully, before she becomes a mother. So that that young Ethiopian girl does not become a victim of an injury such as fistula. The, her life actually is not just the modeling industry and it is not just appearing on glossy magazine covers, but her life is a life of sharing so that she can share this experience and, therefore, and spread the message. I, I really appreciated the opportunity of, um, of helping Leah to, to do this. These are, the people, these are the people that are actually being helped. I mean, there's thousands of others, thousands. I think we have to focus on that. In part three, Kabedi returns to New York with a fresh impetus to garner support for her cause.